great to see everybody here at Focus. I know you're not at the Focus holiday. We are from St. Simons, there's 30 of us here, but it's great that you can join in this clever techie way. And actually, if I just get the crafty cameraman, who's none other than Tuma, to move with me, you'll see maybe in the background a big top poking up, and that's the main speaking venue. There are other venues as well, there's the Fun Fair Park for children, which is incredibly cheap. The football pitches, different things. But the main thing that you can see is everybody camping from the different churches. And uh, despite what you might think of me in a Scotsman, I wouldn't say I was a seasoned camper, but we've got quite into it. And St. Simon's is having a great time. Those of us who are there, maybe if we do this kind of thing next year, we'll do a lot more of us than are here. But we're having such a good time. But the reading that you've just had from Luke chapter 11 follows along very nicely from what we were talking about last week. Do you remember last week I was talking about Jesus being accused of being the devil when he was casting out demons and how Jesus used logic to counter that. He said, well, a house divided cannot stand. It can't be, if I'm doing it of the devil, that would be the devil casting out his own minions. He wouldn't do that. It's not sensible. He pointed out also that the Jewish leaders had exorcists of their own who cast demons out. And he was saying, are your people casting them out by the devil as well? And of course, they wouldn't comment on that. Here we have a reading that you've just had about the wisdom of Solomon, the inquiry of the Queen of Sheba coming to Solomon and also the sign of Jonah. That was the first part of the reading. And Jesus' main message from that was, look, these people had signs. You're asking me for more signs. The sign is in the form of me. Believe in me. Now, you might remember the story of Jonah from his own book in the Old Testament. Remember that? What happened with Jonah was that he willingly gave his life when there was a storm on the boat that he was on, running away from God's call, and a storm came, which thought maybe God was angry with someone on that boat, or the gods, or whatever it was they called it in these mythological times. Jonah willingly said, throw me overboard, and it will be a lot calmer, because I'm running away from God. I haven't told any of you else on the boat, but throw me over, and you'll get calm. And they didn't want to do that, but nonetheless, he insisted that it would be him that if he was thrown overboard, it would be a lot easier, the storm would go away. That's just what happened. Jonah willingly gave his life, he knew he was in the wrong, and then he was swallowed up by the great fish. Alive, not dead, but somehow he survived until the third day. Jesus also was a sign. They didn't know that he was about to willingly give his life and that he was going to actually be dead for three days. But we'll come back to that. The point was that Jonah was a sign for the people. Jesus is saying, I am a sign. And then after talking about Jonah, you'll see, you remember from the reading that Jesus talked about the Queen of Sheba coming from a far off land, the Queen of the South, way south, big journey in these days anyway, coming and seeking the wisdom or trying to be, see if she too would be impressed like the report she'd heard from others with the wisdom of Solomon. She was very impressed and she gave praise to God, even though, if we put it this way, she wasn't actually a believer. She gave praise to God. She didn't doubt and ask for more signs. So Jesus is saying, it's not sensationalism, which you're chasing after, you people listening to me, or some of them anyway. It's not about a sign of something else miraculous. I've already done some of these. You now need to put your trust that I am the chosen one of God. And actually, he brought it back to Solomon, you'll see from the reading. Uh, having, having talked about Jonah and, 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 and the Queen of Sheba, he brought it back to Solomon. Solomon was the son of David, the direct son of David. Now, one of the messianic titles of Jesus is the son of David. And you can actually trace Jesus directly back to David's line. And I find these family trees and things fascinating. I've never quite looked it into into it for myself. But when you see it in the Bible, right at the beginning of Matthew is one notable place. 
you find Jesus going right back to David's line and also he fulfilled the promise given to David it's called the Davidic covenant covenant in the Old Testament and Jesus fulfilled that because God promised David that there would always be someone from his line on the throne of Israel when Jesus came we had a wonderful plate put up at that terrible time of the crucifixion the king of the Jews by an outsider who observed that the king of the Jews and when challenged Pilate said I have written what I have written Jesus was the king on the throne he rose again three days later and that brings us back to the three days that he was talking about Jonah being a sign for the people of being in the belly of the fish Jesus too died actually died on the cross publicly witnessed and three days later on day three anyway was walking around he willingly gave up his life but his resurrection from death was in fact the forgiveness of sins for all people who would come to him. Jonah was a sign because after three days he was spat out onto dry land by the great fish and then preached for 40 days to the people of Nineveh who accepted that sign and they repented and they were saved on generally speaking. Jesus had been speaking already for a couple of years and people were doubting people who didn't have light in their eyes they weren't open to the spiritual light darkness unfortunately was pervading them and Jesus began to talk about that when he came to the bowl over the lamp now I've got four people from St Simon's who are camping on focus and they're each going to give a little take on that and you'll hear that in just a moment but remember these signs the sign of Jonah the Queen of Sheba who believed and Jonah again was a sign to people who did accept Jesus is challenging the people and challenges us now not to chase after sensationalism but to accept him as the sign I remember a time in my life which was pretty grotty it was before I was a vicar anything like that which was before I was married and I went through for two three years some pretty difficult things and difficult identity questions about who I am what I was to do with my life and it felt like the fog the darkness the funny thing is that now I look back and I think I'm glad that I had to go through that because that time has taught me so much about God's calling and what he has for me to do so don't doubt the time that you're in now in fact God may have a sign for you trust that he's walking with you really important okay now to these four different takes on the second the, the last section of the Bible reading coming up now none of you light a lamp and put it in a place where it will be hidden or under a bowl instead you put it on its stand so that those who come in may see the light and it always strikes me as strange that some would even consider covering up a light you might as well just not light it um, and therefore it's really clear what Jesus is trying to teach us here that when he places his light as he is light of the world in us that is a witness to those around us whether we like it or not but he is with us at all times your eye is the lamp of your body when your eyes are good your whole body also is full of light but when they are bad your body is also full of darkness so my take on that is that when we come into God's presence and we get filled with his spirit or others pray for us we then are filled with this light and wherever we go and whoever we're talking to we're then giving wisdom and truth and shining light which takes away the impression and the darkness and the confusion and sets people free so being full of his light is going to set others free and give us a lightness of spirit and an ability to have wisdom to make the right choices in life see to it then that the light within you is not darkness uh, as this verse is like sandwiched in between all the others it, it's just kind of reiterating to us that whilst we want to be full of light and not darkness that that see to it then also puts the responsibility on us in some ways and that we need to be disciplined and think about what we're consuming and um, how we're interacting with God in order to make sure that the light within us isn't darkness. Um, at, actually this morning at Focus I went to a talk um, by Johnny Gumble about um, 
kind of fighting spiritual battles and how the the devil will try and get at us through what we consume um, and that the devil whilst Jesus was in the desert was getting at Jesus through um, his mission here on earth and that what we're doing and what we're consuming is how the devil often tries to access us and so see to it then that the light within you is not darkness it's pointing us to be disciplined and what we consume and making sure that that's always focused on Jesus. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it is dark, it will be completely lighted as when the light of a lamp shines on you. So my perspective of this is that, you know, the body and the will of the body is really empowered by another force and Jesus talked about this force as being light. So sometimes if we want our body to go in a certain direction we have to have the right light and that light is maybe the right word or the right imagination the right thoughts so if we get the right thoughts the right imaginations the right perspective that can empower our body to do the right thing but if our thoughts and our mind and our perspective is wrong then our body will be full of darkness and we'll do the wrong thing. So that's my perspective on, on this scripture. Great, great to hear from others on these last four verses of today's reading. And Jesus is saying, of course, in addition to what the good words that have already been heard, Jesus is saying, keep that light shining on. If he's given you something, let it shine in the darkness. I remember visiting Israel, I think I've said this before another time, I remember visiting Israel standing on the shores of the Sea of Galilee in a place called Tiberias, which comes up in the Bible. And I remember very clearly looking in the distance, maybe 10 miles away beyond the lake, I could see a hill and some grayed out bits, which were like the houses, you couldn't make it out. At nighttime, look in the same direction when it's dark and you see these lights shining out really brightly. It's actually thought that Jesus' reference to the city on the hill cannot be hidden was to that place which is called Shaphat. And it's on the hill north of the Galilee. And at nighttime, even in Jesus' time, there would be little clues that could be picked out from several miles away. Keep your light shining. And of course, do you remember I was already saying that the previous reading, and we looked at this last week at St. Simon's, was Jesus being accused of being of the devil. In fact, it was the people who were judging him who had the darkness in them. They couldn't see that he was the Son of God because they weren't open to the light. They were only open, many of them, to their own systems of hierarchy and power to themselves. They couldn't see the gracious, humble light of God. And yet many of the people who weren't blinded by their own power could see that this was the Son of God. So there's a message in that for each one of us. Are our, lights, are our eyes and our body open to the light of the Spirit of God? So it's a great challenge and what a great reading. And I think that wraps up our time in Luke chapters 10 and 11 over the five Sundays of July. Next month, as I think you know, four different preachers, including me, uh, four different speakers on different psalms of their choice. So we look forward to that. Wonderful. Now we're going to pray. Thank you, Maddie.